So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's do better underscore fitness. And that's for my work one. And our car one is watch underscore German underscore cars. Okay, please enjoy the video. So today I'm going to be showing you the EQC 400 and how you can get to 109 kilowatts charging speed. A lot of people are having problems and I'm going to basically show you how to do it. So for AC charging, 7.4 kilowatts is the max. For CCS, it's rated at 110. I've never seen over 109, but I will show you how to do that. So if you don't already know, this is the CCS port. This is the one they use in Great Britain. I know the US is different. Okay, this is gonna be the charging curve. So based on this chart, you can see from 10 to 48% is the optimal char time to charge it because that is when you're gonna be getting as close to that 109 kilowatts charging speed. Once you go over that, it does drop quite a bit. So as you can see in the data, it doesn't get much over 100 and it doesn't go over 109 at all. And once you get over this little range, it does drop quite a bit. So if you're having problems charging it and you don't understand why, this is the reason. The charging curve is set by the manufacturer and if you wanna get the most out of it, you gotta charge in that region. Another reason the people get confused with this thing is they don't understand why the dealers are saying they can get so many miles and when you actually buy it, you can't. So the WLTP basically, I won't say cheats, but they do the testing without the air conditioning or the heating running, which makes a huge difference in electric cars. So as you can see, 268 miles and 249 miles. Honestly, I almost, I think I get 211, right, mostly. And in winter, I'm seeing between 140 mile range, depending on what kind of driving we're doing, and maybe like 190. So you have to understand that if you're going to use the heating or any other elements in the car, it really is going to affect your range in electric cars. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand this. And you can see with the climate control on, look at the difference. It's a huge. So even with them doing the testing in the same conditions, they're getting between 218 and 204 miles. And that's just because they have the heating or the air conditioning running. A lot of the things do play in effect, bad weather, colder temperatures outside, that will mess up with your range. Um, rain messes with your range. I think the more stuff you're running in the car, it will mess with your range. So you really, in electric cars, you have to think about your journeys a little bit more. They're perfect condition test. They're getting 199 in the real world. And at two kilowatt heating, they're doing 186 miles. But like I said, every single person based on your driving shot is gonna be just different in general. I average between 2.6 miles to a kilowatt hour and 2.7. And I've got a heavy foot. Um, I do try to use the house energy to precondition the car always. And that does help because I'm getting the cabin warm and not having to use the energy from the car itself. That only works if you can produce, I think, more than three kilowatts from the plug that you've plugged it in from. If you don't, it's going to be using the car's energy itself. So now just to show you, honestly, the EQC 400 is great once you understand how to use it. I just want to show you what a Tesla Model X would do. So Tesla Model X from 10 to 37% is over 200 kilowatts an hour. So just showing you that, that is very fast. So honestly, if before you buy a car, you gotta look how you're gonna use it. For us, the EQC works fine. I rarely charge it outside. This is just a local driving car. And when we do take it, I understand the curve. So I will get it to that percentage in the battery. That way I'm gonna get the most out of the charging experience. And yes, you really do have to research what chargers you're gonna use because they don't all provide you this amount of energy. Even when they say the site can do 250, you get there and realistically you can barely do 100 because it's sharing power. So you really do have to look into this. But if you're gonna do doing a lot of just highway driving and a lot further than we're driving, I'd recommend something faster. I'm making a video now comparing our Taycan compared to our Taycan Generation 1 Turbo compared to a new Taycan Generation 2. And we're gonna do a road trip with the two plus the CPC. And we're also gonna be taking a Tesla with us. So it's gonna be fun. We're gonna put on about a thousand miles and I'll show you basically how these cars compare. And the Taycan's just going to destroy everything else because it charges so fast. It's amazing. And honestly, time is money really. And you don't want to be wasting time. And if you're going to be driving like that, you want to pick the fastest charging car that you can. In our case, it didn't matter because 
that's not how I'm using this one. This one is literally a day to like 10 mile round trip. So it's got plenty of power and plenty of charge. Okay, hopefully this video has helped you and it's cleared up a lot of confusion. I think I had 70 or 80 emails, people not understanding how to charge the EQC to its potential. So please like and subscribe. And I have a lot of questions. People asking about the Taycan and the Model 3. I will do charging curves on those as well. So if you like that, please subscribe and you can see that next time. All right, see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.